this is Brad Caleb PhD and my PhD stands for post hole digger. That means that I continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. In unpredictable times is the body of Christ fighting zombies. This is restorative justice 64 where we expose an oxymoron. Restorative justice simply means that we want to see and find that way whereby justice will be restored between the Creator and His creation. So the question is, does the Bible speak about zombies? Often modern day believers, uh, people that write novels, they have these wonderful movies with viral infection, chemical exposure dispersed by government agency to explain the cause of the disease and reanimation of contagiousness and they call that a zombie. Some of us know the jargon of the zombie from voodoo, meaning a reanimated corpse under a witch doctor's control. The zombie name is in different names and the voodoo snake god. That is actually an other name for it and Dambala Vidu or Niger Congo origin. The zombie stellar also exists. That means that there is somewhere a star called a zombie captured by a bokor used to enhance the bokor's power. As usual, zombies nature differ from storyteller to storyteller. Whoever tells the story can make up whatever they want to because zombies are not real. But what about the Bible? What does the Bible say about zombies? The zombies that were participating in the uh, insurrection on January 6, 2021 on the Capitol in the United States. Yes, folks, I consider those folks zombies. But what about the people that were enabling him to have this kind of an effect on others? Why don't we hear anything from the leadership? The people like Paula White, Ken Copeland, Pat Robertson, John Hakey, Sid Roth. They all were prophesying, this is what God says. We see that this is what God says. Insurrection, is that what the law of God says, folks? Are we zombies or are we fighting the body of Christ? Is that fighting zombies? Zombies, folks, just think about it. So we have a general question. Does the Bible talk about zombies? The miracles performed by the sons of light are sometimes the question of zombies, posing a skeptical response to the resurrection account, whether Elijah and the widow's son, Lazarus in John 11, or Jesus himself, Jesua HaMessiah, with the statement in Matthew 27, verse 52 and 53, that says, at the death of Jesua, some of God's followers were brought back to life and walked around in Jerusalem. Do these examples resemble zombies? The widow son of Lazarus, the boy who fell asleep during Paul's sermon in Acts 20, verse 9 to 11, at 12? And what about the others? We're all brought back to full life and presumably continue to live in a proper way. And then they died again. Jesua's body was never reanimated. He was given a new glorified body, which aside from the scars in his hands, feet and sight, was so much better, better than the old one. His closest friends did not even recognize him. We can see that in Luke 24, verse 13 to 16, or in John 20, verse 15, 
And what about the tribulation? Is the Antichrist a demonic zombie? Not that the Bible ever mentions zombies. One instance might be interpreted as a person dying and being reanimated by demonic forces. Is that of that uh, Antichrist? Midway through the tribulation, the Antichrist will receive a mortal head wound and will be healed in Revelation 13, 3. And then we find it again in 12 and 14. At this time, Satan is permanently expelled from heaven, where he did not live, but he occasionally visited, as we can see in Job. There is a speculation that Satan takes possession of the body of the Antichrist. If this is true, perhaps for the last half of the tribulation, the Antichrist is a demonic zombie. For some young people, zombies are fascinating. They projected as humans without humanity. Their combination of no soul, no empathy and violent intent makes them guiltless, target, practice for human survivors. But what about the body of Christ? He said that a zombie is a person or persons who are dead and restored by witchcraft. They are the walking dead. The project in the depiction of that zombie eats upon the flesh of the living, just like the insurrectionist of the capital. Many zombies walk around the body of Christ, and I am in no doubt, for this is not the example Yeshua sets when we follow the way, the truth, and the light. See, on the narrow path, God will teach us to walk the way, the truth, and the light. Yet contrary to the Broadway, Followers of the Broadway or Christianity should not be pleased with that attitude, like the prophet Micah, who said they eat his people's flesh and flay their skin. He said that they break their bones and chop them in pieces as for the pot and as flesh within the cauldron. Prophet Micah had another problem. And he expressed a protest. He was furious and violent injustice and wickedness going around throughout all history. The impact was based upon many shady deals that had taken place against God's people and humanity. As God is speaking today regarding Israel, his holy people, and how many have come against them to flay their skin and chop up their bones. He's also speaking today regarding the false prophets and those who use them for their own profit. Folks, we've heard them. We heard that people speak. Those leaders of the body of Christ that we've seen, they were the enablers of Trump. They prayed with Trump. They laid hands on Trump. They, they forecasted, this is what God is going to do. He's going to use you. And the man believed that he was the chosen one. He will not accept Yeshua HaMashiach. He refuses to ask for forgiveness. He keeps on stealing. He keeps on lying. And the church keeps on enabling. What is wrong with this picture, folks? Do we have the right subject? Or are we mistaken in what we're doing today? I'm talking about the body of Christ in the United States. What is the picture? Are we zombies or fighting the zombies in the body of Christ? There are so many things I would love to share with you, but the predicament that I have is that I need to stay with the basics because the reality is that if we get the basics right, we can never comprehend what is going on in the Bible. I understand that so many people are reading the Bible, they swear by the Bible, they live by the Bible, 
But when I see a shaman standing or sitting in a chair of the vice president in the capital, where they make the decisions about how to run the country, and this man is going to pray with his horns up and then his head and then realizes, oh, I'm praying to God while I'm doing an insurrection and I should take off my horns and then he takes off his head. It was funny. But in the same token, it was so sad that Christians were praying to take over the building. Folks, is this what you're aiming for? You want to take control and take President Trump back? I understand that somewhere, somehow, when he leaves the office, he is trying to do one more thing and then call martial art law. Martial law? What in the world are we talking here? He wants, a <laughs> he wants to get rid of Mr. Pence and then come back with somebody that he just picks up because he supports his insurrection. Mr. Trump has something coming over him. And I understand that if you are that type of a person, if you cannot understand the difference between reality and stupidity, then that means that somebody is sick. And if that is the person you want to have as your leader, as the body of Christ, then I believe that we need to seek repentance and we need to ask God to open our eyes. Folks, I'm not saying this because I rejoice in this matter. I must admit that Mr. Trump has been one drama queen for four or five years. He has been causing anything but results. And you will say, but he's done wonderful things. Yeah, screw around. Now there are injections available and all of a sudden 60 or 30% is not there. Where do you think that is? In one of the warehouses of Mr. Trump or of his son Kushner. And why is that? Because they're filled with greed. And the Bible speaks very simple about people that are filled with greed. They're either serving God or they're serving mammon. And if you serve mammon and you as the body of Christ picks out a leader that serves mammon, guess who you are serving? You are serving mammon. And is that what you really aim for? Is that how you want to raise your kids? Because you refuse to acknowledge that we can make mistakes. Folks, there is nothing wrong. If we are wrong in the decisions we made, then we have to return and we have to repent and say, God, forgive us. We were fools, but if we are too special because we wrote 20,000 books or 500 books or whatever amount of movies you made, and now you're multi, multi, multi-millionaire, or actually you're a billionaire by now, wonderful, you're a Christian, and you want more and more and more, guess who you're serving, friend? There's nothing wrong with being rich. There's nothing wrong with being blessed. But if you want to maintain your money, then you're serving an other God. And that God is not the God that you can find on the small way. See, the mistake started already with the beginning, the foundation. Everything was great when Jesua said, Father, it is finished. And he died and he rose again. Something started, a movement for the narrow way. And why did God say he wanted us to follow the way the truth and the light. It's almost like the fishes. There were a whole bunch of fishes swim, swimming in a big lake and they were a little confused. They said, you know, somebody just asked me about water, but I don't know what water is. So they were talking among themselves and there were some beautiful koi and there was one big, huge koi. It was almost a meter long and he was about 250 pounds. Unbelievable. And I thought, you know, why don't we go and ask that old koi, because he must be very wise. He's been around for so long, he should know what is going on and what water is. When the koi woke up, he saw a whole bunch of small fishes around him, and he thought, hmm, I didn't know lunch was ready. But they came there to talk to him, and they asked him, sir, 
You have been around for a very long time. You're big and fat and wise. Can you help us out? We've been swimming around here and we're having great fun. We're seeing little objects in, in this, whatever this is. But we want to know what is water? And we can't really find out what water is. And the koi looks at them, kind of mystified. He said, what do you mean? You don't know what water is? No. He said, we have never seen it. It's all that simple. You swim in it, you eat in it, you poop in it, and then you go to bed in it. What? This is water, folks. We are swimming in it. We're eating it or drinking it, and then we're regurgitating. Oh, then this is water. And that is exactly what the Pharisees did with Yeshua. And most people know him in the name of Jesus. They asked him, show us God. We are in God. God is in us. We are eating, we are drinking, yes, and we are pooing in it. But God is us and God is in us. So when God is looking to have us go over the small narrow path, he had a purpose with that. And what was the purpose? The purpose was to make us understand that the way, the truth and the light, that is the only place where God will be for those that seek him. See, if we are deciding to go to follow the narrow path, then God can reveal himself. His presence will guide us, direct us, give us wisdom and understanding because everything created is in God. All the gold, all the silver is in God. And so when we go out and enable Mr. Trump to be whatever he wants to be, we are not doing God a favor. We are not doing ourselves a favor. We are in a position where we have to reckon, are we the people on the Broadway, Christianity, two and a half to almost three billion believers, or am I on the narrow path? Am I doing what God wants me to do? See, where the presence of God is, and that was the same problem that Adam and Eve faced, when the presence of God was cut out of, out of their existence, all of a sudden they were living in the darkness. A different darkness maybe, but yet they were missing something. They were created body, they were created mentally, and they were created spiritually. Spiritually they were supposed to live forever. But when Satan betrayed them and basically hoodwinked them, they now got on the wrong side of the road. And God had to direct a new road, a narrow path, so that only those that truly wanted to follow and get reunited with God. That is why we call this restorative justice, because God loves us so much that we can follow that small path and we will be restored with him and we will be back again where God created us so we can live a full life a full life meaning we can live forever healthy no more sickness no more diseases no more poverty no more line up for a grocery store that only has maybe a couple of bottles of water left we will be living in victory but we need to first repent, folks. And if we don't do that because we are Christians and we're storming the capital because we can do whatever we want to do, then we are mistaken. That is not the narrow path, folks. And I'm warning you because I'm concerned. I see my brothers and sisters being hoodwinked again and again and again. I was hoodwinked for a long time and it took me a very long time and when I say a long time six decades and then it took me another decade to write it all down and to understand it and to really get the drift of what God wants us to do but folks we need to go back to basics what is our foundation 
is our foundation a pagan Christianity created in 325 AD by a man called the Emperor of Rome, Constantine I, who couldn't care less whether God was involved or not. He wanted his gods. See, Christianity didn't start with Jesus. Christianity was around 325 BC before Christ was born because those were the followers of a god of the underworld and his name was Serapis and Serapis was an ugly dude of stone and like Satan always does confusion you are confused folks and I realize that a lot of people don't like talking about that because it is very uncomfortable if you have done something your whole life because you were told to believe this and you keep on telling yourself you get an insurrection what we've seen in the capital city on January the 6th we have an insurrection against God when we don't follow the narrow path it sounds great at wonderful the songs you sing but those are not the things that God wants you to do he wants you to follow the way the truth and the light and that is where his presence is and where his presence is that is where you can be found to be protected there will be abundance there will be health because God can be everything that he wanted to be for you in the creation for Adam and Eve but if we fail to make that connection and if we fail to understand that we need to repent and we persist in doing what we're doing, then we will find ourselves like the five foolish virgins in the story that Jesu had talked about. And by the way, the fishes is not me sharing that. This was what Jesua explained to the people. There are more books about Jesua. And I understand that many people only live by what they can see now because they have been told. But God loves you so much that he opened the gyro vault, actually, of the Vatican. Pope Francis opened the vault and that is 52 miles of books and manuscripts. And there are great people that are translating some of those old Aramaic books. They started in 1929. It's taken them decades to do it, but they are available. What Jesua wants us to do, he wants us to succeed. And therefore, folks, I beg you, please don't go up as a zombie. Don't fight zombies because I am more than an overcomer through Jesua because what he has given me, he's given me the way, the truth and the light. Am I willing to share that and see that? and discover that folks tough times never last but tough people do i hope that this has helped you to think and reconsider i'm not gonna ask you i'm not gonna back you i'm not gonna tell you oh pray this little prayer and you are safe because you are not it is action which will show that you are changed and if you only have words and you storm in as an insurrectionist the capital then folks i'm sorry but that is not my father. That is not the kingdom of God. But if you want to change, or if you want to ask God, direct me, open my eyes, then I believe that God will open the doors for you. Because he said, knock. And Jesus said, I will open that door. Because all the wisdom, all the need that you have is in God Almighty. Because he is our father. He loves you so much. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all those other things shall be added unto you. Remember, tough times never last. But tough people, they do. God bless you folks and see you soon.
Thank you.